National speaker and TV show host on Brighteon.tv. You can find me live on air every Wednesday, 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern time, where we bring guests into the locker room for uncensored truth. And it's an absolute honor to be here today. And welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and weekend to come to this meeting. Wow, what a full house we have. It's going to be a very, very special day. And I do want to make sure that after the event today, we're going to be having lunch here at the beautiful Pine Lakes Golf Club. And this event has been organized by the Citizens Coalition of Florida. We are engaged citizens. I'm one of them. I'm blessed to be a voter out of St. Augustine, Florida. So this is a very, very special honor for me to be here today. I do get asked to speak at conferences and MC events all over America. Some of you have followed me on my journey. OhioBrett.com. O-H-I-O. B-R-E-T-T dot com. But I might as well be Flohio Brett because I love having my opportunity to vote out of the great state of Florida. And again, this event has been organized by the Citizen Coalition of Florida. We are engaged citizens committed to monitoring the performance of elected public servants and candidates. And before we get started today, it's my great honor to introduce country music performer, Nashville recording artist, in today to sing the national anthem. Please give a warm, warm welcome for Glenn Baker. Hey, y'all. You excited to be here? Yeah. yeah. Outstanding. Stand with me and join as we uh, sing the national anthem to honor those that have died and given us an opportunity to live in this great country. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the for Glenn Baker. You can go ahead and have your seats. Thank you. Thank you again, Glenn Baker, for singing that beautiful national anthem. So many of us still love this great republic, the United States of America. And we can no longer stand by idly by when public servants fail to act in the best interest of our county, our state, and our country. They must be held accountable. Accountability measures include public inquiries such as this one so we can be educated voters on how to assess our candidates or elected officials. Instead of using postcards, robocalls, campaign ads, or direct mail, the Citizen Coalition is here to educate by examining hard facts such as voting records, character and integrity issues, ethics violations, and conflicts of interest. By examining these aspects, you will be empowered with information to determine if an elected official or a candidate is worthy of our public trust. Team, what we are doing here is radical. Make no mistake about it. 
There is no Mike Lindell, no Carrie Lake, no celebrities, no big names, just regular folks talking to regular folks. According to the U.S. Constitution, we have the right to present any wrongdoing that is taking place in our government. This is what free speech is all about. We hope that what we are going to show you here is as concerning to you as it is to us. Speaking of the U.S. Constitution, are there any U.S. veterans here in the room today? Any veterans? Would you please stand? Veterans, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your service. And uh, why don't we go ahead and everybody stand again, because I want to take this time to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Our flag is right here. If everybody could please stand. I'll lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And it's such an honor to be here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, thank you. Man, what a full house and what an honor it is to be here today. Thank you for taking your seats again. After the event, we're going to have an amazing lunch here at this beautiful golf club. But we are here because we are deeply concerned about Thomas Leake's record. We are deeply concerned about Thomas Leake's record as a representative of District 28. He has turned out of the Florida House of Representatives and now aspires to become the senator of District 7 which includes St. John's, Putnam, and parts of Flagler and Volusia. We contacted him via certified mail and email to his Tallahassee and local off offices. He has not responded. Please hold your questions until the last presenter has spoken. There will be time for questions at the end, and you can write them on three by five cards that were handed out to you before we got started. Please see one of the volunteers to hand them your card if you do have a question. We are going to present a fair amount of information that impacts every citizen and voter in this room. For your convenience, we will provide highlights in the form of a flyer at the end of this presentation. It's an honor for me to be part of this event, and I want to welcome our first speaker, Samir. Please make your way to the microphone. Let's give it up for Samir. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by asking a simple question. How many of us here own our own homes? Now raise your hand if you need a roof over your head. <laughs> Great to see how much we all have in common. My name is Samir and I'm a public insurance adjuster licensed and bonded in the great state of Florida. I'm here to discuss three issues impacting the insured in Florida. As you all know, homeowners insurance rates have skyrocketed with increases of 20, 30, or even 40% in the last few years. According to the Insurance Information Institute, the national average for homeowners insurance is $1,700 per year. In 2020, our average homeowners insurance premiums were $2,165. Three years later, it is now at an approximate $4,200 or above. In spite of the high premiums, insurance companies take advantage of any and all legal loopholes they can to avoid properly indemnifying policyholders who suffer a large loss. Others are choosing not to renew policies or are tightening their eligibility criteria. Mostly, they demand substantial rate hikes or costs, you know, costly remodels to be done on the property before issuing a policy. In other words, the cost of insuring our properties is not only getting out of hand, but becoming an impossible situation. Florida is besieged by unethical claim settlement practices. We represent a mere 9% of U.S. homes insurance claims, 
but a staggering 79% of the lawsuits. Shockingly, of the $15 billion paid out by insurance companies over the past decade, only 8% went into settling claims. That's over $13 billion paid by insurance companies to deny, delay, and defend themselves against their own policyholders. This leaves policyholders with no choice but to resort to lawyers, litigation, and the court system to obtain the compensation our insurance premiums were meant to fund. This issue is not just the high premiums we pay. The issue is how our legislators operate in Florida, creating rules and funneling compensation funds to benefit the insurance companies and not us, the insured. It's simple enough. As many know, and for those who do not, insurance companies take in premiums and then reinvest and reinsure their policies in a financial risk management investment strategy. An example of successful insurance management is Warren Buffett, who controls Geico Insurance. Our legislators, in concert with insurance lobbyists, have created an unfortunate insurance situation in Florida. We, the citizens, suffer all the losses while the insurance companies, through unethical claim settlement practices and questionable legislative actions, benefit from the gains. Mr. Tom Leak is our Florida State Representative since 2016. Those who lead our legislature have been largely responsible for the poor laws on the books managing insurance. Tom Leak has served for eight years in the Florida House of Representatives. He is president and chairman of Cobb Code Law. Representative Leak currently serves as the chief legal officer for Foundation Risk Partners, a prominent national insurance brokerage representing over 30 agencies. It's one of the fastest growing brokerage and consulting firms in the United States. Given his extensive background, Representative Leak knows the insurance industry. He could either draft and support fair and equitable laws for the citizens of Florida, or he could draft and support laws that benefit the insurance companies that fund Mr. Leak's business. Given the situation we have in Florida, we find little evidence that he supports the fair treatment of policyholders, even though he is our representative. Since 2021, several insurance bills have passed through the Florida legislature, including Senate Bill 76, House Bill 837, and others. We can call them leak laws. Every one of these bills must pass through the Influential Appropriations Committee to determine its financial viability, impact, and influence. Since 2018, Tom Leak has been a member of this committee and assumed chairmanship in 2022. These laws he created and helped pass provide incentives for insurance carriers to underpay claims, allowing them to manipulate the insurance and legal system. The insurance companies underpay property claims forcing homeowners who may be in a desperate situation to sue in court for the correct claim amount for their damage. Even if you win your case, the most recent leak laws will compel you to pay your own legal fees. Normal practice is that the insurance company pays the insured's legal fees for underpaying a claim. The purpose of this structure is to incentivize companies to be fair in their adjudication of claims and payment. Victims of insurance companies should not have to bear the financial burden of obtaining what is rightfully theirs. Furthermore, if an insurance carrier's mistake causes the need for litigation under leak laws, even if it's the carrier's fault, the policyholder is responsible for their own legal fees. There are a lot of subtle aspects that are detrimental to citizens under leak laws. For example, the time to file a claim was reduced from three years to two years. Damage caused by wind, hail, or other storms can often take years before full roof failure. It starts out small, but over time, problems spread, leading to full roof failure, which should be covered by your insurance. Most policyholders are not well versed in roofing or construction materials. 
Thus, damage can exist for an extended period of time without the homeowner's knowledge. It is only after the roof starts leaking that we become alert to these issues. Under leak laws, damages found outside the two-year window will not be covered under your policy, leaving the policyholder to bear the cost. More subtly, leak laws permit insurance carriers to deny or limit replacement coverage for roofs that are 10 years or older. In fact, if your roof is 10 plus years old, you only get a percentage of what it's worth after depreciation is factored in, which is not nearly enough to replace it. For those on fixed incomes, this poses a significant economic hardship, yet roofs are built to last for 20 years. These laws also make it challenging for homeowners to seek help from licensed public insurance adjusters who understand industry tactics and tricks. In fact, several of these laws have attempted to restrict the free speech rights of adjusters, contractors, and other advocates on the side of the policyholder. Here's a sobering fact. There are no measures within leak laws to protect policyholders from the unfair claims practices used by insurance carriers. In summary, leak laws overwhelmingly serve the interests of insurance carriers because they have allowed insurance carriers to increase premiums to where it's unaffordable for some families to carry essential coverages on their property. They also have reduced the time frames which homeowners have to file a claim and they have burdened policyholders with having to fund their own legal proceedings against a multi-billion dollar industry in the case of underpayment or denial of a valid claim. Tom Leak, with his deep ties to the insurance industry, should have done better for all of us, his constituents. There's more. This is only part of the drip, drip, drip of leak laws problems and selling out the public. There will be time for questions. However, I would like now to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Henry. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Henry, I'm retired Navy. Let us continue with further examination of leak laws. Has anyone noticed a change in their electrical bill? Since 2021, mine has increased by 35% with nothing changing except inflation's effect on rates. Maybe it is time to install solar panels? The net metering structure we have, floor, have in Florida promotes the development of renewable energy sources. We are the sunshine state after all. Well, not so fast. In 2022, Representative Tom Leak voted to change the net metering structure, enabling monopoly power companies like FPL to change higher prices, charge higher prices, sorry. Let me explain. Under net metering, electrical companies must buy back banked energy stored by homes at the retail rate. Some of the <clears throat> banked energy com comes from homes that have installed solar panels. That energy is added to the grid and redistributed to non-solar customers. HB 7041 aimed to end the buyback mandate. There are reports that FPL drafted and encouraged state lawmakers to file legislation constricting the rooftop solar industry. 84% of voters support net metering. This bill was a nightmare for anyone who believes in the people's right to choose the energy that works for us and our families. If it had passed, this law would have severely diminished the growth of the solar industry and the people it employs. Fortunately, because tens of thousands of consumers got involved, Governor DeSantis vetoed this very unpopular bill and it did not pass. Our energy bill are on the path to doubling just because of inflation. Where would we be if HB 741 had become law? Just remember, Tom Leak voted for the utility companies and not for us. Imagine your loved ones, let's consider another scenario. Imagine your loved ones is in a nursing home. 
There are therapeutics that can protect them, including one therapeutic that is safe and effective. In fact, the discovery and development of that therapeutic won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2015. But imagine that the nursing home prohibits administration of ivermectin or other prevented therapeutics to your loved ones. They get COVID and have complications, need to be hospitalized, or possibly die. Would that have happened if they had access to therapeutics that would have prevented this unnecessary suffering? Now, let's say you had COVID-19 and had to be hospitalized. Imagine that the hospital will only follow government issue health care standards, including the CDC's COVID-19 guidelines, which we all know did not work. <clears throat> Excuse me. And led to unnecessary medicines, ventilation, and death. There are many examples of situations where the hospitals and institutions responsible providing health care to Floridians were more concerned about their profitability. There are Floridians and family members who experience horrors at these facilities. Should we have legal recourse to seek justice? Yes. Yes. In 2022, Tom Leake voted for SB 7014. This bill extends the legal immunity to health care providers offering COVID-19 treatments, even when negligence leads to severe harm. While legal protection makes sense in some cases, the bill shields health care providers from lawsuits if they refuse to administer ivermectin or promising treatments that do not follow government approved protocols. And yes, that bill did pass in 2022. As you can see, Tom Leake's votes favors these three industries, insurance, utility, and health care. Boo. <laughs> when, client, when citizens attempted to contact him or make appointments to discuss their concern, he ignored them, us. Remember Leake's voting record favoring big business at the expense of ordinary citizens. And our next speaker would be Libby. Thank you. Hi, y'all. <laughs> I'm a proud grandmother of six, okay? And in a past life, I was, that's before I retired. I was director of IT in charge of custom web software development. That's a mouthful, <laughs> you know. But today we're going to talk and address how Tom Leake has clouded our wonderful sunshine laws in this state. Okay. Okay. Uh, Florida sunshine laws are a series of laws and regulations uh, within our state that assure that we have access to our public meetings and records. Okay. The Sunshine Laws encourages all the agencies uh, to be transparent in their operation, making information about their activities, decisions, and expenditures readily available to us. This transparency helps Floridians Stay informed about how our government functions. Our sunshine laws require open meetings and public access to records, which facilitate holding government officials responsible and accountable for their decisions and actions. Public scrutiny and oversight is essential to our democracy and to maintain our democracy. That's kind of a good thing, don't you think? Yes. yes. Okay. However, in just this past legislative session, okay, Tom Leap voted for a bill that shields the travel records of Governor DeSantis and many other state leaders. This bill also withholds from the public the names of certain guests at the governor's mansion. Hmm. Yeah. SB 1616 creates public records exemption that is held by law enforcement agencies related to the security and transportation of the governor, the governor's media family, 
the lieutenant governor, all the cabinet members, the Speaker of the House, the President of the Senate, and the Chief Justice of the Florida Supreme Court. Oh, wait, wait a minute, I forgot to tell you, this exemption is, does not only play, it also applies to all the trips they've taken in the past. So history is history, but you can't find out what it is. <laughs> As you know, it's probably highly unlikely that a bill like this would ever have been introduced if Governor DeSantis was not running for president. This might as well have been called Ron DeSantis is running for president, Bill. Oh, and we don't want you to know where he is and how long he's been gone away from his duties here as governor. Yeah. Yet again, our legislative branch has bowed down to the executive. As the bill is written, the legislative branch also added in language to hide the activities of the Senate President and the House Speaker from public scrutiny as well. This bill sets a bad and dangerous precedent all over. Now we're going to change gears here just a little bit. We're going to play a little game of follow the money. Okay? That's always fun. <laughs> as a Republican, I want to imagine that Tom Lee could be a fiscal conservative especially given the fact that he is the head of the Appropriations Committee. Okay, and every bill that is passed in the government has to pass through that committee. As the chairman of the committee, it is well within his power to stop any of these bills at any time he sees fit. Okay, it's intriguing that just this last year in 2022, Mr. Leak voted for HB 5001. Well, that's a budget bill, okay, put it in a nutshell. But it increased our budget by $10 billion from, from what we had in 21. That's $13 billion more than Governor DeSantis asked for in his proposed budget. Okay. <clears throat> Needless to say, this uh, legislative bill itself is full of handouts, which include, wait on it, two, not one, but two private checks for our legislative leadership at a cost of $31 million. Also, earlier this year, in 2023, Leak voted for Florida's record high. <laughs> Leak voted for Florida's record high of one point, excuse me, $117 billion in spending. Unfortunately, we don't have the time here today to examine these budget increases. But I think it is safe to say that Mr. Lee is not a fiscally conservative legislator. Okay. Now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, friend of mine, Spock. Let me see if I can get this to work. Yeah, hi, my name is Gary. They call me Spock. My friends call me Spock. But anyway, as uh, as you just learned, Representative Leak's voting pattern is favorable to corporations and big business. I will review his campaign funding and political action committee contributions, direct donations to campaigns for the Florida legislature are limited to $1,000 per individual, but lawmakers have found a way around that through the political action committees. A PAC is an organization formed to raise and spend money to influence elections and public policy. PACs may contribute to other candidates to fund issue campaigns and to even pay to target opponents or promote favored candidates. The amount of money a company or an individual can donate to a legislator's PAC is limitless. The name of Tom Leake's PAC is Living Life with Purpose. Yeah, right. 
let me let me show you what we've found. According to the Florida Department of State, Living Life with Purpose has received $4.2 million since 2017. Through the persistent efforts of citizen researchers, we determined that the insurance industry contributed at least 485,000 of that. Other significant industry contrib uh, contributors were health care, real estate developers, hmm, and utility companies. Here's a graph of leaks pack sources. Uh, as you can see, contributions from other sources and other PACs amount to $3 million. Determining the origin of these funds takes considerable time and effort. PACs donating to other PACs is completely legal, but as you can imagine, unraveling the money trail is complicated. Suffice it to say that living life with purpose is a financially robust and the contributing industries parallel Tom Leake's legislative inclinations in his voting record. <clears throat> in addition to the PAC money, over the same 2017 to 2023 period, Leak received $1.3 million on campaign contributions, amassing a total of $5.5 million. <clears throat> to put this into perspective, let's look at Representative Lamarca, who serves in a coastal district in Broward County. He is considered one of the top Republican fundraisers in the state of Florida. Despite this known reputation, his combined coffers of candidate plus PAC money pales in comparison to the war chest amassed by Leak over the same period. It's Lamarca is approximately 2.7 million b below Leak, which is about half of what Leak has. Our, our investigations revealed the address of this little house in Tallahassee where contributions of more than $700,000 were made to living life with purpose. Note that the value on Zillow is $289,000. Very curious. As you can see, follow the money often provides much to consider and ponder. So let's talk about the banana, banana Republic tactics. When Alex Newman considered running to represent District 28, Tom Leake's surrogates approached him to discuss his political future. Alex was told, <coughs> excuse me, Alex was told he would have Leake's full support if he just deferred his campaign until 2024 when Leake would term out. Newman decided not to defer his campaign and to run against Leap. <clears throat> Once this became known, the full force of the establishment came against him and any other local leader who would support his candidacy. <clears throat> this full force manifested in media hit pieces, hate mail, and underground campaign and defamatory postcards we estimate that approximately $250,000 was used against two leaders who were not even running for office. Now check this out. Arcoba President Chuck Collins from Ormond Beach and the County Commissioner Jeff Brower were both attacked. Obviously, <clears throat> we cannot establish a direct link to Tom Leak on this matter, but it is clear that he was the intended beneficiary of all these Marxist tactics. As you can see, Tom Leak has failed to properly represent District 28, and now he has announced his candidacy for Senate District 7, comprising St. John's, Putnam, Flagler, and Volusia counties. Consider his lack of engagement with his own constituents. Consider he was invited to appear here today and didn't show. Consider how leak laws fail all Floridians. Consider the money trail. We hope this information is foremost in your minds when it's time to vote. And this is a biggie. Please vote in the primaries. A lot of people set out in the primary and wait for the general election. Wrong. We need the primaries. Everyone needs to show up in the primaries and vote. <clears throat> He de Leak does not deserve, deserve to be a representative, much less a senator. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you.
Thank you again to all of our speakers. And can we have the QR code here? If you guys can take out your phones right now and go ahead and take a picture of that QR code so we can all be connected. And again, thank you so much for all of the speakers. I'm just as upset as you are with what I have heard. We have a few minutes for a couple questions, and I'm going to ask a couple of our volunteers to come up and read them aloud. Volunteers, if you can make your way to the front. And thank you again for taking a picture of the QR code. Welcome. I have heard that the public adjusters are part of the problem. Can you explain? Thank you, ma'am, for the question. That is a great question. Um, so I will acknowledge that there is a 1% of public insurance adjusters that do entice homeowners to engage in unethical practices. But that's, again, that's them enticing the homeowner. That's technically the homeowner is willing to engage in unethical practices to try to defraud their insurance. However, 99% or the majority of public adjusters are just advocates. Um, they're advocates to help get from point A, which is a denied or underpaid claim, to a proper indemnification. Um, because we just know the verbiage, we know the laws, we know the industry tactics. For example, insurance carriers will try to deny you a pipe in your home burst and there's water all over your home, right? You call up your insurance, you say, I have a leaking pipe. That's an instant denial before they even come out and take a look at your property. Why? Because you said leak. You put it out there, there's a leaking pipe. Leaking is considered a continuous and ongoing issue. What we public adjusters will say, this is a broken pipe. Broken is, is sudden and accidental. Sudden and accidental, coverage, continuous and ongoing, denial. So, I mean, this is, this is pretty much what public adjusters do because we see horror stories of people getting mistreated. You know, their homes cave in and they end up getting a $1,000 check and their deductible ends up eating it up. So, I mean, they end up getting a zero, you know, for an oak tree falling through their roof, which is a real story. That's a claim I'm handling in, uh, in, uh, up in up northwest Florida. So, I hope I answered your question. Thank you. So the question I've got is, do we need legislation because of roofers knocking on doors and lawyers overstating damages as the cause of insurance companies becoming insolvent? So they had to leave Florida. It seems like I'm the popular guy here tonight. Um, so that's also another great question. So. And so the, the, the act of roofers or contractors going on knocking doors is considered unlicensed work of public adjusting. And that's already been a third degree felony in the state of Florida for a long time, right? Because there's a conflict of interest. If the person doing the work on your property is the one negotiating the claim, that's, that's a conflict of interest, right? However, the real insurance fraud we're talking about is insurance companies defrauding their policyholder. And I'll explain how that works. When big catastrophes happen, you know, a hurricane, Hurricane Ian, for example, right? All of a sudden, you had thousands of homeowners putting in claims. Guess what insurance companies did? They went insolvent, quote unquote, right? So now all of a sudden, you, the policyholder, is fighting for your money through the Florida Insurance Guarantee Association, FIGA. You're fighting the state for your money as they completely liquidate, and they then, a few months later, start a sister company. The mother company starts a sister company. They issue these letters to their previous policyholders saying, congratulations, all of a sudden, you can, we can insure you again. We can start collecting premiums from you so that we don't pay you, you know, when you actually need a claim. Right? So congratulations, you can start paying us money again. That's what's considered insurance fraud. So no, insurance companies going insolvent is them just defrauding the policyholder. Can you give us an example of an United Property and Casualties. United Property and Casualties last year, they went insolvent and then they started a company called Slide, which I thought was clever because they technically slid all the all their all their policyholders to under a new policy. So I mean, I, I will give them I will give them the, the, the credit for the pun. But yeah, that, and United Property and Casualty are fraudulent. The mother company started a sister company. Go ahead. So 
So if you have a problem in the house, uh -huh. you say we should call an adjuster to come look at it? So, so there, are, there are three types of adjusters, and I will explain. You have what's called an independent insurance adjuster, which is hired out by your insurance company. They work for a, um, a staffing firm. They send out, they're pretty much estimators. They sketch and estimate your damage, and they send it out. There's something also called a staff adjuster. They work for the carriers. They're a W-2 employee under the carrier. Who you want to hire to represent you is a public insurance adjuster, right? Public insurance adjuster work for the public, for the policyholder, and that's what I do, so I, I'll, I'll We'll exchange business cards here in a little bit, but thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Can you have some closing remarks for us? All right. Let me go through the closing remarks. Quick question for you. Did I hear you say that now, if, as a homeowner, you're not happy with the, uh, the settlement from your insurance company, and you go to court and you litigate that matter, even if you win? Mm -hmm. So as of January 2023, after um, um, the recent insurance reform passed, yes, they took away the prevailing party statute for insurance claims. Basically, um, the insurance part, pr the prevailing party statute is the losing party gets to cover the winning party's uh, 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 legal fees. That's no longer the case for any claims on policies that are dated January 1st, 2023, or later. Right. So for supplemental claims on previous, uh, you know, policies that were older than 2023, if you want to supplement the claim, you're still good for your attorney fees to be covered. But in a year from now, it's, it's going to be a catastrophe for, for, for policyholders fighting their carriers. It's not going to be, it's not going to be pretty. Yeah, yeah. You lose-lose. It's a lose-lose. Whether you win, you, you still lose because you're having to pay your attorney fees. You're getting 50% of your settlement at best. So, um, okay, so I would like to say something Closing remark? I have no, I have no problem in this race. I don't agree with insurance companies plenty of times. I don't agree with public adjusters plenty of times. But I tell people to do their due diligence. That's your job. That's your job to look into your, what you're entitled to. If you did a show of hands today, how many people in this room read their insurance policy, I guarantee uh -huh. it's probably me and him. Perfect. Okay. All right. All right. Same way for looking into the um, if we could do closing, thank you, Mrs. Mrs. Beth. I believe I believe we ran into each other on a couple of properties before. It's good to see you. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, in closing remarks, thank you everyone for coming. At the back of the room, you will find a flyer that summarizes key points of this presentation. It has a QR code if you would like to become uh, part of this movement and get more involved. You are now better informed. Be a voice to your neighbor, friends, and co-workers. Tom Leake has announced his candidacy for Travis Hudson's Senate seat and is endorsed by the establishment. Given all that you have learned today, does he deserve to be our next senator? No! No! Leake has thousands of dollars at his disposal for his campaign. Those of us in this room have a responsibility to educate our communities as we elect our representatives. In the back of the room, you, um, in the back of the room, there are local leaders and various organization volunteers. If you would like to learn more and get more involved, thank you. And thank you, Samir, and to all the speakers today, my friends of Volusia, Putnam, Flagler, and St. John's, you are now part of Florida history. This has never been done before that we're aware of. Regular people talking to regular people. No celebrities, no big names, just citizens engaged in governance to inform and safeguard our individual freedoms and liberties. To those of you who are watching live from other parts of the country, why is this not happening everywhere? The challenge is issued live from Florida.
because so few have dared to boldly leap from complaints to competently organizing to creating consequences for the establishment. The Citizen Coalition of Volusia County is breaking the mold and paving the way for their brighter political future. America, shouldn't we all be doing the same? Thank you so much for coming. Remember to take and share a flyer and scan the QR code to get involved. Thank you again for taking time to come out to this beautiful country club and let's have some lunch. And this will close the event. Thank you very much.